Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a Monday, February 5th, and uh, Chapo is back at it again. Felix and I are joined today by our pals from PAL, Cameron, Cameron, and Cameron. Cameron, welcome to the show. <laughs> What's what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? How's it going? It's the pod about list, gang. Uh, here, to take, here to take a look at the lighter side of the news. You know, we've been covering a lot of, a lot of disturbing stories lately, but let's talk about Let's talk about some of the, the funner things happening in the news. So just um, let's hit those Grammys, y'all. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, who had the best outfit <laughs> last night? <laughs> I oh, I think it was Cameron. Mm. Did yeah, you guys watch the Grammys? <laughs> Is this something you guys like? I d- I did not see the Grammys. Wow. I saw the I, I saw the Killer Mike was arrested at the Grammys this morning. That's what I saw, and I saw the uh, the Tracy Chapman performance, which was nice. Mm. I didn't see but, either of those. What did Killer well, Mike get arrested for, man? Uh, apparently, he, like, I don't know, he got into, like, a shoving match, like, eight hours before the Grammys. I don't, like, if it was a guy who's, like, the same size as him, I think that's fine. Yeah, I know. You should <laughs> just walk away from that. Yeah. Who's calling the police on a <laughs> shove? <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, I just I, I don't know. I just don't I don't agree with I don't agree with that. If it's like when two huge fat guys shove each other, isn't that I mean, that's like a sanctioned sport in most countries. I in most agree. Well, I, you know, also, I bet I bet you that the that he shoved the they got into the shoving match. They were about to arrest him right then and there. And then they went, hold up. We can get on TV at the Grammys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's wait a little while and arrest him later. <laughs> there is nothing better than watching two giant guys who look like catcher's mitts just like pushing each other back and forth somewhere. Oh yeah. They really should they should have been one of the performances at the Grammys, I feel. Didn't you go see Sumo like not that long ago? I did. I went to Sumo plus Sushi in the Bronx and it was really, really awesome. And then I saw those guys collabed with Guga Foods. Oh, I kind of blew my fucking mind. I felt like I met Guga, man. Yeah. And the whole video, he was like, I could not even cook enough for the sushi guys. <laughs> and that was, that was like the whole, he was like, he acted like he was in trouble because uh, they ate all the food and he was maybe scared they were going to eat him next. <laughs> is, is, this, is this a restaurant where you can watch a sumo match? Oh, Will, no, this is no restaurant, my friend. You will not find a brick and mortar store for sumo plus sushi. This is a traveling circus style show. Oh, okay. In which you go and they give you the same sushi from the grocery store that I think they buy next door. They charge you sixty dollars for the sushi, and then you get to watch the sumo for free. <laughs> That's a well, pretty good deal. Yeah, that I mean, is an amazing yeah, deal. I mean, it no, was fucking awesome. It. I'm not gonna lie, it was fucking awesome. Oh yeah. Were the were, were the sumo wrestlers were they all Japanese? Because I, I, I am I'm interested in like white sumo wrestlers. There oh, was they were Japanese, and then I think there was one guy who's Hawaiian. Yeah, uh, but here's the trick. I noticed this after my keen eye noticed this a couple of hours into sumo plus sushi. The sumo was rigged. What? Oh, that's unfortunate. How, how did how, they, wait, would, how, they how, would? Oh, they'd run at each other oh, and slap each other, and then one of them would completely flop as we Draymond Green fall over. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> it was really sad. That that actually makes sense because like if you're doing like uh, a ton of if you're doing like you know four matches a month then you're you you know bob sap no no bob sap he's in a lot of like um old viral mma clips he's like um this gigantic like uh he's like seven foot one he's this giant black dude and he would always just like run at his opponents he was really big in pride in k1 but he's sort of he's infamous for like throwing fights and when he was asked about it, he's like, yeah, no, I just I don't want to take any damage because I, I, you know, I fight 10 times a month as a professional can for even halfway decent fighters. So the moment he gets into trouble, he just instantly taps out. <laughs> I get it, man. Fuck all yeah, that. No, yeah. I would tap. They put me in an MMA fight. I'm tapping out instantly. I mean, yeah. I'm, okay, I'm not. Uh-uh. I would literally. I would. They would. The, the bell would ring, and I would get on my knees, and I would beg, and just yeah. get awful. Please, no, 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 please, no, 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 I signed up by mistake. I didn't want to fucking do this. <laughs> no, I, I think. I, I think avoiding taking damage is an excellent fight strategy. I mean, I, I pursued. Uh, you know, if I, if I if I pursued a career in combat sports, my strategy would be never get hit, take no yeah. damage, defeat my opponents, perfect perfect one shot every time. 
Right. That would be ideal. I would kind say. of the glass cannon build. Just yeah. train mm-hmm. train one fist to be really, really strong, DPS. really sharp, maybe, <laughs> really <laughs> deadly. Yeah. Able to kill anybody in just one hit, and you just kind do of a, um, kite do them like around a, for a minute. Like a Japanese watermelon, put your hand into a spiked yeah. mold, yeah, and, yeah, then, and then you grow <laughs> up. <laughs> and then you grow up, and now you have a sharp spear <laughs> for a hand. All of now your fingers doing, uh, form like uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> The yeah, you're a little kid. You just get your hand stuck in an ice cream cone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, there you go. go. <laughs> okay, get, get your hand stuck in an ice cream cone, and, and then get the ice cream cone like brass or something, like dip yeah. it in molten, <laughs> molten metal. So mm. you know what? Wolverine style. Get it. Get yeah. uh, mentium on it. I well, fellas, I I think we have just discovered a great new event to be included in the Peter Thiel Drug Olympics. Folks, oh, you heard about this yes. one, yeah. Peter, Peter Thiel announced this week um, plans to have a uh, sort of like, I don't know, the human enhancement games. So, yeah, like there'll be Wolverines out there. There'll be Wolverines. I mean, I'm, I'm like, if you're a Wolverine, I would I would I would probably go for a combat sport. But, you know, if, mm-hmm. if you're into marathon running, uh, there's room for Wolverines in that. He's too, good at that, too. I yeah. just, I'm rewatching yeah, all those movies right fast. now. He ran He's, all through the Civil War. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I watched that. I watched that last night. Wait, I, he's in the Civil War. Yeah, yeah, he's in. The, he goes through every single war. How does he go to the Civil War? He's immortal. He's, 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 he's immortal. He's immortal. Okay, but, okay, like okay, hold on. Pause. pause. But I pause, thought that he was pause. an experiment, and I thought they didn't have experiments back that far. No, okay. no, no, no. The, 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 You're going to learn today, buddy. <laughs> the, the claws are part of the experiment. Like when they mm-hmm. put metal on his skeleton, yeah. that was obviously an experiment. But the thing where he, you know, he can get like shot in the head and he's like, you made a mistake, bub. That's all natural. Yeah. Well, so he's been around forever? Yeah. Cameron, Cameron, years. Cameron. There is much you don't know about the X-Men. Wait, Will has something. And you you are about to learn. He's been around since roughly the early 19th century. His mutant ability of enhanced healing factor lets his body age much slower. He's not immortal. He was born with claws, but it was the Project X, uh, you know, Weapon X experiment that gave him mm-hmm. the adamantium skeleton and blades on his claws. But Wolverine, if you're out there, please contact Mr. Peter Thiel. There's a new Olympic event that pits you <laughs> against um, 500 children to see uh, who can win in about a man with razor sharp claws or, or, or children. Before you get upset, though, the children signed a contract uh, before they yeah. entered the Wolverine yeah. death match. So, like, yeah, you can't it, get yeah, upset. Just, That's legal. Yeah. I feel like Peter Thiel doing this like the, you know, the oh sports league where all steroids are legal. It's the same thing as if he like started an award show for everything but rap and country. It's just such a like such a boring, boring guy opinion that everyone everyone is the first they, they think they're the first guy to come up with this. Oh, I think oh, they should just have a UFC where everyone pisses hot. People have been saying this for like 20 years. I feel like the key to making a, something like that really sing is not the is not the steroids or the drugs or anything like that. I really think I think it's body mods and mutations. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, you know, swim meets with people who were born with flippers, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like it should <laughs> be Warhammer, Space Marines. Yeah, like completely. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. operations to to tra- the the Black Alien Project. I was just I was going to bring up yeah. the Black Alien. Yeah, do you guys know? Are you familiar with the Black <laughs> Alien Project? <laughs> No, tell me more. I would oh, like to know wow. more. Oh, oh my God. God. I would like to know more. <laughs> I'm Crazy. so excited to tell you about this guy. He is a uh, he is only 45% complete with his operation, but this is a man who has been doing so many body modifications to himself to look like a black alien. And he's he's gotten he, his uh he's gotten his ring is and he, pink okay, fingers wait, wait. removed. Is he uh, black though? Or is no, he, no, no, no. It's all well, tattoos. Not, he's black now, but he used to yeah. be white. <laughs> I don't think he's. I think he's <laughs> from he South America have, or something. But he also he, used to have lips. Yeah, he got his yeah. lips removed. He got his nose removed. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, okay. first guy right there. So this he's got um, even like gold, dermals right? in his arm so that uh, say, he has ridges. He looks more like an orc to me. Don't well, tell he's him only forty five percent of the way done. Okay, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. He posted recently. He posted recently that his he a Photoshop picture showing his final completion, where he photoshopped his head to be really like elongated, like a mm-hmm. like an alien. So I think he's going to try and find a doctor who will stretch his head to be twice the the height. Or uh, how would he do that though? Would it? Do you think that they would just like? Have you seen that like Turkish barber that puts like 
Oh, oh yeah, the like, volcanoes. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think? I think that's the only way for his head to get elongated. There's no way that he could get like a, a cranium dermal that like is that long. I know. I know another barber he could go to that would elongate his head. If you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> certain barber shops that doesn't require clothes. I like that uh, shit. Oh I'm my god! Saying, I have like, some crazy news about the Black Alien Project, guys. I just oh, opened it. Up. He has given up on body modification. What? He <gasps> has halted the project temporarily at sixty-five percent. Okay, okay, okay. Like, okay. T- temporarily, temporarily is good. I, yeah. I, I was afraid you were going to say like, oh, now he's going to get like his real estate brokers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm I've only I've only forty for I've only forty five percent turned myself into a monster. It's time to re-enter the workforce after yeah. giving up this. Yeah. But what he does say, what he does I say, give up. Fuck he it. says, I'm putting an end to the modification of my body for the moment. I no longer like this world. I'm going to finish my full black all over the body <laughs> and finish for the moment like this. <laughs> Goodbye, body modification. Well, well, so I mean, he's I'm not with the I mean, body he's... mods except for going full black. <laughs> okay, he's, he's going full black. That means he won't be getting a spot in the Peter Thiel enhanced human. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a great. I think it's a great idea from Peter Thiel. I'm thinking of like a couple of events. We could a couple of events like this. Like, okay, it's a, it's a row of treadmills, and it's basically like an endurance cardio event. But um, after every five minutes, you have to keep snorting cocaine. And basically, the Ooh. last one who is still uh, still his heart is still um, pumping blood uh, wins the medal. But I'm thinking maybe a Peter Thiel NFL. Where uh, the white players get to play in mech suits from Avatar. <laughs> Let's make it fair. Let's make it fair. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna put a lot of money research, uh, a lot of money and in research into Flubber. He's gonna make Flubber real, <laughs> so that, yeah. so that finally I do we have an advantage. I hope that we think it's gonna be steroids, but maybe he hasn't clarified it. It ends up being like spells are allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have to do backflips in every sport. I'd like that. Yeah, that would be sick. Yeah, uh, if yeah. it's like if it's kind of what you guys were talking about with like turning your fist into a spear, like if it's if it's less steroids and more like BME pain olympics and magic, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. True. He did say Olympics, didn't specify which. If Peter Thiel does make Flubber real, though, I take back every bad thing I've said about him. I think mm-hmm. that's, that is a, that is a worthy endeavor for mankind. Put me in the, yeah. put me in the training or the uh, testing phase. I'm, I'm going to test Flubber out. I don't think I ever realized until this very second how much I want Flubber to be real. Yeah. <laughs> I really you don't would think like about that, that every happen. day. No, I kind of I kind of haven't thought about Flubber since I was a kid and now I'm thinking about it and I'm like they really need to get on that immediately. Mm-hmm. You just want a friend, man. <laughs> Dude, it's a friend that bounces. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally just a friend. Uh, First of yeah, all, it can be a, basically a million guys in only yeah. one blob of Flubber. It can split apart. Second of all, it can bounce around. (laughs) When I was a kid, I thought Flubber could solve all my problems. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's nothing in my ass right now. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Here comes Flubber. Problem solved. Check that one out. (laughs) Yeah. Did Flubber make things fly in the movie, too? Or did they just bounce in a way they looked like they were flying? The car fly. Yes. The the, the car 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 fly. fly. And there was a robot, too. I just remembered that. The, doesn't the flubber fall in love with the robot? I think the robot falls in love with the human. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> Patrick, hmm. fl- flubber, flubber doesn't have emotion. Fl- uh, flubber is incap- incapable of feeling. Flubber is like a virus. Not when it's I like get a near bacteria. Uh, <laughs> Do, Buddy, once I get near that flubber, uh-uh. It's going to be feeling all sorts of things. Yeah, you're going to get a BBL made out of flubber. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be bouncing from state to state. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you can't sit on the airplane seat when you're flying back and getting your BBL. Because <laughs> of the plane. The plane. On the inside of the plane. The plane's going to look like it has hydrogen. And the plane would fly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I had this story station saved for later, but since Caleb, since you brought up um, sumo wrestling, and I guess this is tangentially related to uh, wearing diapers, so I'd like to share a uh, story with you now from courtesy of Slate, Matt, Slate.com. Uh, this is, this is uh, the headline here is Toilet Trouble. Kids in diapers in kindergartens don't need laws to fix them. Kids wearing hmm. diapers in kindergarten do not need a law to fix them. Here's the story. A Utah legislator has proposed a bill, HB331, that would, re- would require students to be toilet trained before they are enrolled in kindergarten. 
The bill sponsored by Representative Douglas Welton may sound reasonable, but it actually represents everything our culture gets wrong about toileting accidents. If passed into law, it will harm kids. Let's start. This with is bills. everything that Rage Against the Machine saying again. <laughs> Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. <laughs> Fuck you, I won't shit where you tell me. <laughs> Fuck you, I won't shit where you tell me. Okay, let's, say, let, let's start with the bill's rationale. In interviews with the media, Welton has said that Utah needs HB331 because too many children are showing up for kindergarten in diapers, overburdening teachers. That's not what teachers signed up to do, to teach kids how to potty train, Welton told the Salt Lake Tribune. That's a parent issue. That should happen before kids get to kindergarten. Okay, so I'm waiting to hear the rebuttal to this, but like I, I think I'm, I feel pretty much on terra firma, saying that like if you are still shitting in diapers by the time you enter kindergarten, that's that's not good, that's not good. When it says like teacher, like the teacher shouldn't be doing this, so like teaching kids to potty train, like does this imply that teachers are changing kids in kindergarten? That you just sort of like tug on your teacher's pants and be like, teacher, please wipe me. I'm glad I didn't know that was a rule when I was in kindergarten. I would have used this rule. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Showing my teacher my ass every day. Does, it, does this feel a little bit like a way to curb like school shootings? Like kids who are still wear, wearing diapers, just like you're not even allowed in the school. <laughs> <laughs> we know where this ends. <laughs> well, I mean, like, well, think about the kindergarten. You, were there any kids in your kid? I mean, look. We've all we've all had that one kid in the class who shit his pants. Not me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me. But like, were, were there were there kids were there kids in in your schools growing up who were still wearing diapers in like kindergarten? Not um, in kindergarten. I mean, maybe this is a Utah thing. Yeah. Oh. It could be some Mormon like crazy at like I don't. I feel like they wear diapers all the time. I feel like that's like. <laughs> It's Isn't that like religion. written into their yeah? The, it's their written into their body. They wear a full temple, body diaper, or, or underwear, whatever yeah. it's called, temple garment. Yeah, they wear full body diaper, and it's magic armor as well. It really? protects, it's more oh, we'll to protect that. outside things getting in, like bullets, more than mm. inside things getting out, like pee and poo. I bet mm. I could. Well, get you got to get rid of that. You got to get. You got to expel toxins. That's true. Well, you know, if you're wearing something like that, you can just kind of go in it as you please, and then clean it out at the end of the day, kind of a cleanse. Well, here's you know? the thing. I don't know if anybody in my class wore a diaper when I was a kid because it would have been under all their clothes and I didn't go to that kind of school. But if somebody has a diaper, it doesn't have a diaper on, it shits their pants, now everybody's going to know. Yeah. So this is maybe even worse for these kids well, who are doo doing. Well, like you say, like you, you wouldn't know they're wearing a diaper if it was concealed under their clothing until they, until they soil it, filling it with feces. Mm -hmm. And then, like, then they will be asking, someone change me. Someone changed my diaper. Someone wiped me. Like, because then they're just walking around with a diaper full of shit. So, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's going it's to be a problem regardless. But it says here, Welton's bill requires assurances from a parent that a parent's student is toilet trained. If the student then has bathroom accidents, the family would be referred to a counselor or social worker for support. The child would be subsequently reintegrated after they had become toilet trained. But a I like that the kid, the kid, like, gets to go back into gen pop. <laughs> after, be, after being in, in diaper solitary <laughs> it's just, uh, but H HB331 is based on an erroneous assumption that five year olds who need diapers are not toilet trained in reality school age children in pull ups like Steve's patients at his practice in pediatric urology are toilet trained and were taught by caring and diligent if frustrated parents accidents have nothing to do with instruction or slacker parenting Rather, virtually all of wedding, uh, wedding accidents and soiling accidents are symptoms of chronic constipation, a condition that's misunderstood, overlooked, and untreated. X-ray these kids, and you'll see a rectum enlarged to at least twice the normal diameter. Of, okay, no, I'm not <laughs> doing that. No, no, wait, not, wait, not no, doing that. Is, I'm not. This is a I'm good not, idea. Uh, no, no, that, 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 that is a gr that is a great way to like just get into way more trouble. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, 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 I'm your son. I'm your son's kindergarten teacher. Um, do you know the size of your son's asshole? <laughs> Pretty soon, they're like metal detectors at high school. Every kindergarten giant X-ray machine to see if they have shit poking out yeah. of their ass, turtling. Well, they the bill is going to make it so the kids have to wear the diaper on the outside of the pants, like a bulletproof vest, uh. or like a cop. <laughs> This era. How how does this happen? Well, when children delay pooping, as they often do, stool piles up in the rectum, which stretches accordingly. In some kids, the oversized rectum aggravates the nearby bladder nerves, causing the bladder to hiccup, forcefully and abruptly emptying day or night. 
Most kids with daytime accidents experience bedwetting too. Often the stretched rectum loses so much sensation and tone. Imagine a sock that's lost its elasticity that the child, <laughs> child cannot <laughs> feel the urge to poop and or fully evacuate. Stool this just drops out of the floppy rectum without child. Without the ch- Stool just drops out of the floppy rectum without the child <laughs> noticing. We know this is a vivid image, but these are the facts. Thank so, you, Slate.com, yep. newspaper yeah. record. <laughs> so they're saying they're saying that like kindergartners are like run through by not pooping. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> this is in a bill, or this is Slate saying? Yeah, okay, all right. Well, th- th- this is Slate's argument against HB three three one, the bill that would require students to shit in toilets um, instead of. Uh, Instead, instead of having their floppy rectums trail shit everywhere because they've they've delayed pooping, and you know what? There, this is actually uh, this is the very first chapter of Charles Bukowski's childhood memoir, Him on Rye, features a scene where he talks about delaying pooping and having it harden inside him because he wants because he doesn't want to shit at home. <laughs> so he's talking about walking home with a sock full of hard shit. <laughs> That's bad. That is, that is like, yeah. I feel like that is like uh, something. I wouldn't say it's like universal, uh, but I feel like a lot of kids, um, you know, they hold it in a lot because it, it is scary to like shit in an unfamiliar bathroom when you're five. Right. And holding it in is also just fun. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's a fun yeah. game to do throughout the day. You turn green. Uh, uh, Another event to be featured at the Peter Thiel Enhanced Humanity Olympics. <laughs> holding yeah. it, in. Hold it, hold it. Yeah. shit in the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that now that's making me think like most of this Peter Thiel Olympic things is going to just be like Kenny versus Spenny episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just exactly. like every single challenge is like that. So it says here, um, I was referring to Steve, who's the urologist expert in this. He says, in Steve's experience, adults in diapers, no, no, sorry, students in diapers who are referred to school counselors don't get the help they need. Worse, they're subjected to treatment they don't need. Schools routinely recommend counseling, art therapy, sticker charts, and potty training action plans. When what these kids actually require is a course of suppositories and x lax Accidents persist and kids feel like failures. How will they feel if they live in Utah and can't even attend school? Over the years, Steve has had countless patients suspended from school, threatened with suspension, or simply humiliated into disenrolling because they couldn't graduate from diapers. I like the idea about uh, art therapy and sticker charts for kids who can't shit right. Yeah. Well, you know, take the, take the shit and make art out of it. Or, or you know, like a... Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Shit, Draw shit. the poop you want to take. Yeah. Anything yeah. can become a sticker if it has a, a glob of shit on the back of it. <laughs> yeah. of it. See, this is the problem with today's society and today's schools. We have these kind of namby pamby soft art therapy type things to figure this out. And truly, the answer is all oh, what you have to do is you have to take a diaper, you have to make it look really scary, and you have to put spikes in it. You say, True. "Okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna shit in a diaper, there's a diaper you're gonna have to wear." Yeah, and the kids are gonna straighten out. Iron Maiden diaper. Mm-hmm. I think I mean I think we need to just educate kids how good how, I mean just how good it feels to take a shit you know like I mean I, it is intimidating to shit in a school bathroom an office bathroom but here's the thing it's stealing time from the school or your employer mm-hmm. that is that is the true benefit of shitting somewhere other than your house especially when you're on the clock like at school or at your job oh. just take like just go out to school say I'm having I'm having trouble with my diapers but I got a potty train then just take a lovely twenty minute dump during math class. No one can get mad at you. No one can get mad at you. I pretty much used to do that every class when I went to school. Oh, yeah. Of <laughs> yeah. course. In college, what you're oh supposed to do. God, if, if I had to have a diaper on in college, I would have learned so many things against my will. <laughs> they start talking about <laughs> Sylvia Plath, and I go, I, normally I say, okay, well, I have to go take a humongous giant shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> but then all of a sudden, I'm sitting there hearing all this bullshit. Fuck that. Well, uh, sticking your head in an oven is uh, one way to deal with that. <laughs> uh also yeah like i mean like, there's, there's there's a lot more advice here but i mean you get the picture kids in utah are not shitting right but we shouldn't we shouldn't judge them for that right it could happen to anybody that's an amazingly <laughs> curated story just for us coming on the show by the way <laughs> yeah. i know that this is if it was just you and felix there's no way you'd be talking to me. <laughs> Some kids walking around with shit in their pants in utah so right, i appreciate uh, that all right next story 
Uh, experts say two million on the verge of starvation in Gaza. All right, let's wrap it up about this one. <laughs> Moving on from the, the, the shit sucks story. No, no, here's another one from the later side of the news. Pigeon was cleared of being a Chinese spy, but served eight months anyway. Wait, Cameron, why are you nodding your head? You know this story? The pigeon. I'm nodding because I'm happy the pigeon was cleared. It's not fair. But <laughs> for them, is, to, was for this them a to giant? That pigeon. This is a national trial. <laughs> you haven't been following this, Casey Anthony style. For three weeks. OJ on a on a bird. Yeah, this is on this is on the news every day. Have you seriously not been keeping up with this? I mean, you should have known we were going to talk about this on Chapo Trap House. Where well, inform me. This is how out of the news I am. Here we go. This is from the uh, this is from the New York Times. Suspicion of foreign espionage, cursive messages in ancient Chinese, a sensitive microchip, and a suspect that could not be stopped at the border. Ravindar Patel, the assistant Mumbai police sub-inspector assigned to the case, was scratching his head for answers. But first, he had to find a place to lock up the unusual suspect. <laughs> Wait, so he turned... Why is so this he... written like a noir story? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a suspect that couldn't cross the border. What the <laughs> Why is it written like this? Uh, so, 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 so he turned to a veterinary hospital in the Indian metropolis, asking it to retrieve a, li a list of very confidential and necessary information about the suspect. A black pigeon caught lurking at a port where international vessels dock. Oh, they caught a pigeon lurking. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was lurking on a statue uh, near uh, sensitive infrastructure. <laughs> but it says here, uh, the police never came back to check the pigeon, said Dr. Mayur Dangar, the manager of the hospital. After eight months, the bird was finally set free this week. It's innocence of spying for China, long confirmed through crack detective work. But the jail door is flung only flung, flung open only after a newspaper report, repeated letters to the police by a veterinary hospital and an intervention from an animal rights group. The group PETA India celebrated what it called the end of a wrongful imprisonment. It says that the bird had been spotted by guards with the Central Industrial Security Forest, which watches over government facilities like ports. Not the first to cast a critical eye on the pigeon. The duty officer saw this one loitering alone. It was just sitting there, and it looked suspicious to them. <laughs> the chip and ring on its feet, Mr. Patel said. The guard informed the police. Once Mr. Patel had found a place to lock up the bird, the slow work of investigation began, and he started piecing together clues. The rings on the bird's legs, including one that had a chip, were sent to the forensic scientist lab. The chip had details of the location coding, what it is, where it had come from. Nothing else turned out to be suspicious. He cross-checked the details with information online and concluded that the pigeon was a racing bird from Taiwan. And speaking to the guards at the port, which mostly receives oil vessels, bringing crude from, for refining, he learned that the Taiwanese ships are among those that docked there. He deduced that the bird had probably reached Mumbai on one of the ships. Ah, the game is afoot. <laughs> but, what, but what if the chip, but what if the cursive writings on the wings? It was not readable, he said. Because it came by sea, it may have faded. So <laughs> I like the idea that the pigeon got one of those tattoos that's like, yeah, this means power and family and name. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was really just, really just nonsense. I feel like I can I can identify so much. I can really put myself in the experience of these of these guards at this facility, like just being completely not having no idea what I'm doing at my job, like seeing something and just be like, ah, I guess maybe that could be <laughs> something. Like, and just having just four other guys who are so fucking stupid also there with me, just be like, I don't know, man. He said, he, he, I guess he said he pointed out. I mean, maybe, maybe we should call us in. And I'm like, this, you think so? And they're like, Yeah, man. I don't know. It could be. What do you think? And I'm like, This does uh, feel I, like I don't know, a, like a Dale episode of King of the Hill where a pigeon <laughs> lands in his backyard and he's, yeah, yeah, he's just a, that's he's a, a Chinese spy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> eight months, dude. Taking care of a that was someone's job for eight months to take care of a pigeon. It's pretty awesome. Well, what if it? What if it like unlocked something in them and now they're like. The biggest pigeon handler in Mumbai. But do you maybe think something. He, maybe there was something good that came from this. Maybe he he found a new uh, a new love for whoever pigeons. was taking care of the pigeon. Found a new way to send messages. To it, started walking yeah. around the precinct <laughs> with the pigeon on one of the like falconry hood things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the arm thing. Yeah, he's, like, he's you training. He's training a fucking pigeon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's training. Uh, he's training thousands of pigeons now to uh, like to, to hand deliver the message. Hello, sweetie. India is lying too. <laughs> yeah, people all yeah. over the world. <laughs> you know. You know those like uh, good morning flowers that they love to send in India. Yeah. Yes. That would be a great job for pigeons. Oh yeah, that is genius. Yeah, because do you do you remember the story from like two or three years ago that like 
the Indian internet was buckling under the weight of all the good morning messages. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that should entirely be the domain of birds. Should alleviate a lot of bandwidth. Oh yeah, just put a micro SD card, tape it around their leg, send them all, <laughs> send them everywhere, send them wherever you want. But you know, I just like uh, for our listeners there, like if you're if you're near a port or in a major urban area of any kind, and you see a pigeon that looks suspicious, please report it. If you see something, say something. <laughs> this is a story in the please Atlantic from from December, <laughs> and it says here. Okay, it begins, perhaps you've heard Americans are having fewer children on average than they used to, and that has some people concerned. In the future, the elderly could outnumber the young, leaving not enough workers to pay taxes and fill jobs. Kids already have fewer siblings to grow up with, and parents have fewer kids for them to care care for them as they age. Oh, and people have fewer cousins, but who's talking about that? With many... (laughs) (laughs) I feel like it's assumed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Unless you thought that cousins are like, I don't know, conjured or yeah, something <laughs> different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like someone saying, like, we're running out of food, and then it. someone's like, yeah, well, what about lunch? You don't become a cousin until you register with the Cousins Bureau. Then you're yeah. just, you know, some, some fucking kid. You know, people are not registering their, their cousins anymore. So we don't we don't even know we don't even know the extent of the crisis. There could be millions mm-hmm. of cousins out there in America right now just going going like uninvited to saying what birth, what birth, am yeah. I? What the yeah. fuck am I? <laughs> it is really sad to think about a Ronin cousin, a cousin yeah. without an uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Just wandering, just wandering, wandering around, the world. trying to figure out like yeah. Kane. who the fuck he is. Yeah. Yeah. He has no he has no one to like talk about salt burn with. <laughs> When Buster Scruggs came out, he just didn't know what the fuck. To do. <laughs> I guess I'll just watch it by myself. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who's gonna watch like that? That Thanksgiving is gonna be ruined forever. There's gonna be nobody to go on walks with. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. God. Yep. That's because true. nobody wants to work anymore. Mm. <laughs> the American kids, they don't want to put in the hard work of being a cousin. No. 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 So it says, despite being related by blood and commonly in the same generation, cousins can end up with completely different upbringings, class backgrounds, values, and interests. And yet, they share something rare and invaluable. They know what it's like to be part of the same particular family. American families are shrinking in general, but with cousins, that drop happens at a dramatic scale. Sha Jiang, a UC Berkeley dem- demographer, put it to me this way. If everyone hypothetically went from having five kids to having four kids, that would mean one less sibling for each child. But it would yield a much bigger decrease in first cousins. Instead of having a child, instead of a child having four aunts or uncles who each have five kids, twenty cousins, they would have three aunts or uncles who each have four kids for a this total hurt my of brain. twelve. <laughs> 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 what the fuck is all this math, man? Uh, one, one uncle and one aunt leave Cleveland on a train traveling fifty miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it derails and kills them before they're able to have kids. How many cousins do you currently have? If your um, co- if your cousin fucks Kate Upton on a train <laughs> going this way, <laughs> wait, Felix, your cousin fucked Kate Upton too? <laughs> wait, wow. Yeah. Oh wow. What a co- wait. Yours did as well. See, that's yeah, why cousins are so important. He was she a man. He was the cool, he's the coolest guy I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of into cousins. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, you're a cousin? <laughs> Biting your lip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just slide up to Kate up and be like, yeah, I'm someone's nephew. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I did think that that was such a sick brag when I was younger. Just like, yeah, I have 18 cousins. That is sick. <laughs> <laughs> like, like bragging about the amount of cousins you have is so fucking Some stupid. Amazing I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm impressed. Well, that's 18, just Irish Catholicism. Yeah. That's what. That's well, yeah. there's your there's the problem to the, or the the solution to this problem. We you need to what? bring back Irish Catholicism. Yeah. You know how impressive that is to a Jewish man, yeah. where like all our the youngest our parents are when they have us is fifty eight. <laughs> True. <laughs> like it, it, it's like you know usually it's two kids max. We are you know the Jewish people are a people poor in cousin cousins are assumed in evangelical Look, circles you can have some of mine all right i have a <laughs> cousin named patrick it but, makes it makes christmas <laughs> confusing you can take him 
but Patrick, like when you when you were at school and you're like you're you know you're you're dropping the cousin brag. I have 18 cousins. I mean, I think that's cool because like that's letting the other kids at your school know they fuck with you. You have like mm-hmm. uh, a fucking like an NFL team worth of guys who back that's true. Your back. Yeah, exactly. Guys, well, guys and girls. I'm assuming I'm assuming all your cousins are only cousins. guys. Only guys. Family that is only guys. Is only yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. There are no <laughs> way he's family I at all. I do have I have 17 cousins, one girl, guys. Really? And then she had five hey. kids, all boys. That whoa, whoa! Isn't that amazing? My life wow, is that, brilliant. The, the, the seed is strong. This That's bad so bookkeeping. Strong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, uh, my family. If I choose to have one, I am really aiming for an equal mix of boys and girls. Like you know, what, George so they get w- married to each other. I don't understand. No, just balance. Like, look. I don't think George W. Bush was a good president, but that's one thing about the Bush administration that I really admired. There was an equal amount of boys and girls during that time. It's not <laughs> like today. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, everything's out of whack today. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a drought of cousins. That's the worst thing that's ever I've ever heard. It's horrible. It is I- very sad. There's just there's just a, a world of experiences that uh Whatever the name is for kids that are born in like 2015 won't have. Mm-hmm. They'll never have somebody call them and they're because con- they're confused. They mixed up K2 and CBD and they'll call them and say, <laughs> I think I just fucking smoked CBD. <laughs> they, they will never know the experience of explaining how to train a dragon to a 24 year old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. No one's going to know. De- Dance with the Devil by Immortal Technique will never be heard again. <laughs> <laughs> no so one's sad. ever going to hear. <laughs> cousins are cousins are so even if you're not like close with your cousin, you know, some people are some people, their cultures dictate that they're close with their cousins. But even if you're not, your cousin takes a vital role of um, whenever there is a moment of silence at Thanksgiving they have to say something totally insane. Like, well, this was the worst year of my life. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thankful for nothing. (laughs) (laughs) No one else is going to do that. That's such an important cousin thing because, yeah, you know, if a brother or sister says that, you can be like, shut up, fuck off. But a cousin, I feel like, is just distant enough that you have to full. You can't. You can't engage with it at all. Yeah, you give yeah. them yes. a stranger's benefit of the doubt a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, Cameron, like, I mean, this is brought up in the article where it says, like, you know, in, in contrast to sibling relationships, the classic cousin relationship relative to that is amazingly uncomplicated. Cousins tend to have more distance in age than siblings, even if they're in the same generation. Generation. They also typically have more geographic space between them. Less affluent families are more likely than wealthy your ones to live in close proximity but even so sharing a house with a cousin isn't the norm neither is giving the kind of material support such as financial existence you'd be likelier to give to n- nuclear family members megan n reed at emory an emory university sociologist told me and there's not much societal expectation for what the dynamic has to look like pop culture is full of sibling antics bickering pranking sticking up for one another in school Fewer models demonstrate how cousins are supposed to interact. God, I never thought about that. I'm, I'm actually, I just, I just realized I'm playing one of the. Right now, I've been playing one of the a video game that is maybe number one cousin representation of all time, and it that's is? Donkey Kong Country Three. <laughs> Dixie Kong and, and Kitty Kong are cousins <laughs> well, and, in that game, and that's oh, a uh, pretty uh, magical okay. relationship. Uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, Will and Colin yeah, that's were cousins. cousins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my cousin. cousin Vinny. That's a, I mean, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, the future it's podcast right there, about list movie that will certainly be yeah. cousin focused. <laughs> It'll be cousins and nephews and uncles. We're gonna have uncles in there. So they are saying this is a, an issue of representation. Yeah, mm-hmm. or it's like that's so much representation. It's just that the, like you know, uh, kids they see they, they see brothers and sisters. So there's like a model for how you're supposed to behave to your you know to a sibling. But whereas like the cousin role is just less uh, less clearly defined. So there's like it's sort of freeing in that way because there's less expectations and there's less proximity to one another. But you still have sort of a common frame of reference from being uh, related in some sense. Yeah, I guess it is. It's a role that that a brother or sister can't fill because a cousin is a role model where you're supposed to. That you're supposed to end up not like them. You're supposed to look at them and say, I need to do everything this kid is not doing. <laughs> True. That, that exactly. is I don't want to be like this guy role. at all. That is a yeah. vital role in a family, though. Like, thank yeah. God for that. They Not only do they tell you what not to do, they really take the heat off of you. 
if True. you're having like a fuck up period of your life, you know, it, you know, thank God for your cousin who like got fired from community theater. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I've been that cousin and I feel yeah. great that I took the heat off because I was I was fucking up so badly. Yeah. It's your duty as a cousin to go through a phase like that. Siblings yeah. are a team, and the cousins are the teams that you're playing against. It's Wario <laughs> and Mario. It's it completely how it is. is. That's one hundred percent correct. I mean, like you know, I, like similarly in my family, when I look when I look at all my cousins who are like married and have beautiful children, I'm thinking not, that's not for me. You know, look at these fucking losers. They're fucking, uh, thank they're you. married and have jobs and, and wonderful yeah, what children. What the hell is that? I don't want to, to call a podcast yeah, about just... list on the video call. <laughs> That's what I will do with my life. Um, Last paragraph here. It says here, a cousin's sparse future then could be a greater loss than people might recognize. It might also make the relationship that much more important. With fewer of them around, cousins may need to depend on one another even more. Families are shrinking, but that doesn't mean they need to come apart. So wait, wait, that's a great. Uh, Patrick, Patrick, call call all 18 of your cousins today. I'll call them all. Actually, I just remembered... I just remembered uh, that number's gone up. I forgot about my two <laughs> yeah. younger cousins. Yeah, wow. Congrats, I that just don't. So they're funny. not. They're not the same yeah, age yeah. as me or any. They're any. They're really young. So I just I think of them as other nephews. Yeah, Patrick bragging once again. Fucking yeah, <laughs> they three want, cousins. Yeah, An article about how no one has a cousin anymore. Patrick, you're, you're <laughs> I, I got too all. many. Pretty, I got way too bro. many. Uh-huh. So they want cousins to call each other up and straight up say like, you know what, man. For real, there's not many of us left, man. We gotta, <laughs> yeah. we gotta keep this shit rocking. Uh, it's I I I don't know. I feel like that's exactly that that, that my cousins were my neighbors growing up. That's so a I bar. Have, that's that a is, fucking camera on bar. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that is I, I feel fire. like. I feel like they're again. I'm bragging about you know what? I'm just bragging about my cousins again. That's I really crazy. have nothing to say other than bragging that I was I lived right next to my cousins. Everything that they're saying in this article that should happen, being in close proximity or whatever, I already did that shit. True. I my cousins were my neighbors, so you ain't worried about this. They were saying no, they, Pat. You worried. misunderstood. They were saying that you uh-uh. shouldn't live close to your cousins. They were saying you should. So basically, you're saying what you're saying right now is no, you actually I mean, had a bad. They're saying, they're saying, they're saying they don't. They're situation. just saying it should or shouldn't. They're saying, but like tech, you know, like statistically, most cousins live further or they're 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 further away from you than you know. You know, obviously, your siblings. They were real close. So they're saying you're yeah. a freak, Pat. They yeah. were right next door. I think that yeah, I think that maybe I'm a freak of nature or something. <laughs> I don't really know. That is a that's a beautiful lifestyle that I feel like. That's how my dad grew up, and that's I. That to me, that's a very like I think about that, and I think about black and white photos type vibe. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it's kind of magical to have that in the in the late nineties, early two thousands, to be living in a big house with your cousins. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous of that. No, you're yeah, right. I, I, I bet you are. <laughs> Caleb, I, I, do, I do I do love that as like a like a camera online, like a brag. Like everyone yeah. in my building, <laughs> everyone in my building is because my cousins. <laughs> everyone my on neighbors the street, were my cousins. Every guy you see in my around me are cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and then he lists the name of all of them: <laughs> Ryan, Anthony, Megan, Anthony, Dan, Anthony, Eric. All Ryan of names. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an amazing track, man. Yeah, all my friends' cousins. On that. All my ten friends minute long, cousins. ten minute. All my long friends' song. cousins. All my ops dead. Yeah. <laughs> that's what happens. That's what happens. You roll with eighteen deep with cousins. All right. Well, uh, you know, here's here's an, here's another article. This was from the uh, the Wall Street Journal. This is uh, n- not about the uh, invisible cousin genocide going on right now, but this is another look into the youth of today and the world that they're living in. Headline is: For Gen Z, tough guys wear rings, lots of them. This was in the uh, the fashion section of the Wall Street Journal, and it's uh, <laughs> let, let's dive into this one here. It says: Terrence McDermott barely has a finger to spare. Each day, the 26-year-old cigar shop assistant manager in Phoenix <laughs> plops silver rings onto Stop. nine of his ten fingers. <laughs> he does sound like a tough guy. He's <laughs> yeah. the article be like, tough, cool guys are wearing rings. And it's Terrence McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better. His clinky assortment includes a turquoise signet, a ring inspired by the late rapper MF Doom, and a pinky <laughs> ring that he tried on and oh couldn't pry God. off, so he bought it. He is not yet married, so his soul-free digit is for, is uh, on his left ring finger. So 
One of his rings is just something that is stuck on his finger that like he had to, he had to buy so we could leave the store. <laughs> Hermit where did crab. They, where did they say this was? Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix. Well, yeah. Okay. They, I mean, the sun's boiling this guy's brain. I don't think that that's no, no. That's I've a tough I've guy noticed thing. this epidemic not so much among tough guys, but I've noticed the rings. Yeah. these rings the are getting thing. out of control. I mean, look at Cameron. Look at his. Look at his hand. Yeah, check it out. Guys. Yeah, I have like Damn. five <laughs> rings on each finger. <laughs> One that's just like an eagle. I just right have. There. I have. I have the the, the fucking. I have the infinity. The a full infinity stones from like uh, from the Avengers. Just like five sets of them on on every joint. Men should only ever wear three uh, wedding ring, mm-hmm. a class ring, or a mm-hmm. Super Bowl ring. If it's yep. not one of these three. That does not belong on a man's hand, my friend. That is a lady's hand. Well, can That's it be right. any kind of championship? Hell no. It has Super to be Bowl Super Bowl. What, WNBA? Bowling. What, the WNFL? <laughs> I don't understand your question. Darts, billiards. No, they don't give rings out, man. Those are ribbon sports. Those are blue, <laughs> right. blue ribbons. All right, I didn't know. I didn't know. I needed you to school me on that. You know what I hate? I hate that the, the knuckle ring that is, uh, it's always like a bird head or some shit. Yeah, you know those uh, rings, dude. I hate yeah. These well, rings. well, okay. My my uh, frame yeah, I mean, of reference for tough it. guys. My frame of reference for tough guys growing up was Bam Margera of of CKY, and he no, wears he was, that yeah. exact ring. He wasn't tough. So, he wasn't tough. Is what are you not, talking about? He was tough talking in relation about to himself all yeah, the time. He's, he's tough in relation to the ground. He was fighting <laughs> the ground tough. often. <laughs> he's tough on his. He's uncle. not tough in relation to other men. <laughs> he's tough on his uncle Don Vito. <laughs> what, that's he another man. He gets in a fight in a bar. He heroin fall asleep instantly. That's his defense. Like a Pokemon, he's just fucking big bubble coming out of his nose. This is not. A, <laughs> that is not a tough guy. Uh, uh, I beg to differ. You know, a guy with rings is tough because he have to he has to lift his hands to do anything. Yeah. He's heavy. Well, I guess that's fair. Uh, well, so tough guy Terrence McDermott says of the rings, he says they're just a part of me. <laughs> <laughs> the ring guy has become a stock character in Gen Z and millennial men's fashion corridors of the internet in recent years. You can find him on TikTok in pithy "Get Ready with Me" videos, flaunting a bounty of quarter-sized silver rings like a Vegas-era Elvis. He's there on Instagram posting selfies with enough silver on his hands to set off a metal detector. Hefty <laughs> rings are <laughs> hefty rings are a weighty counterbalance. Oh, sorry, hefty rings are a weighty counterbalance to all this softness. Consider the male figures most closely associated with adorning their fists: biker gangs or the braggadocious '80s rapper Slick Rick. I just like. I, the think of the think of the think of the two like one is just like uh like a like a stock group of people like imagine a biker and then the other is a specific person slick rip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can come with also a nothing t- nothing something? tougher than being braggadocious. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wasn't the How tough many- thing about slick Rick his eye patch though? Yes, what? What? but also it was his bravado. I believe he oh, was. Yeah. It, it was less the eye patch and more that he like shot his brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was tough. Uh, uh, some some more examples here. It says, how many guitar playing, chain smoking, weathered looking men from Keith Richards down to Johnny Depp have slapped some skull rings on their fingers? It's a look that says in pretty basic terms, I'm cool. I'm tough. I'm badass. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. I, I hear, I, here's my advice. To look, to look cool and badass, like adorning, adorning your fist with something. How about a gauntlet? How about like, a, like just a yeah. gauntlet from a suit of armor? I think this that would work. be cool. This or one work. pauldron. Yeah, pauldrons Ooh. would be hard as fuck. Pauldrons, to walk out, yeah. To have a full just, you know, classic uh, uh, baggy shirt, baggy pants, fitted hat, but then just a big-ass World of Warcraft pauldrons, like yeah. paladin. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and an anklet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what about a tail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or well, one big, one big wing the on the back. That's rings, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having one giant wing here and a pauldron on this side. Basically, I'm describing Sephiroth. Yeah. I don't like this. I, I don't think that these should, unless they're fused to your finger, something that is very tough should not be something you can take off. It should be tattoos or sharp teeth. These are the only <laughs> options for making yourself look tough. Yeah. Uh, with so much clattering metal on their hands, ring guys are easily identifiable, and the connotations aren't always welcome. 
In Showtime's cringe dramedy The Curse, Benny Softy plays a flailing TV producer with stringy long hair, ripped jeans, leather bracelets, and silver rings that fill each of his fingers. On him, the rings are a flashing silver signal of an insecure man in the throes of a serious midlife crisis. But, you know, I mean, not if you're Gen Z. If you're, if you're Gen Z, it means you're cool, tough, badass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tough, badass working at Buffalo Exchange. God damn, this guy. <laughs> yeah. This guy's a fucking beast. Yeah, they have a tattoo for every shirt they've stolen. Holy shit, look at this guy. Damn, Even where'd you get those? Jewelry store? <laughs> <laughs> Even somewhere commit else, maybe. <laughs> Even committed collectors admit that sometimes you just, can't, you, you, you just can't look like you rolled off the set of Sons of Anarchy. McDermott of Arizona says that he removed his ample rings for job interviews. The whole biker thing, people will probably get the wrong idea about me, he said. I'm I'm also a young black guy. I don't think so, West. man. <laughs> yeah. I think he might be okay. I'm also a young black guy in the Southwest who has dreadlocks and wears Johnny Depp jewelry. <laughs> Fortunately, his <laughs> boss likes his sense of style, and <laughs> so all nine of his rings go on every day. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> walking in for your first day on the job. I know you might think I'm a Sonny Barger or something, but I assure you, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, this ring is for MF Doom. <laughs> the metal face one. Do you, I mean? Uh, uh, do you do, do, any, do any of you do any of the pal guys? Are, are you, do you have any? Do you adorn yourself with any male jewelry? I don't even wear a, a wedding ring, man. That's how much I do not like these rings. I don't like. Wow. Because I, you know, I I don't want to ever be in a situation where because I know this happens sometimes where you wear the rings and your finger gets caught in some way. Yeah. And they're, oh, mm -hmm. there goes my beautiful it finger. Get ripped off by Great. someone yeah. maybe casting a fly fishing line or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or a guy with a big And magnet. I'm hiding underneath and I'm breathing through a reed. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to sneak up on this guy. <laughs> and yes, I did think it was a fly and I was hungry. And now I don't even have a finger. So that's a really scary scenario. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like before you get into the ring lifestyle, educate yourself on some of the dangers of wearing rings. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, don't, you know, when when you're about to get an MRI and they're like, do you have any jewelry on? You're like, nah. No, it's part <laughs> of me. Nah, <laughs> just it's like, part like, of like, me. It's part of me. <laughs> I actually don't yeah. take this off, dude. This is my best friend's brother who passed away in a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> this was his ring, so I don't take this off. You take my. You finger. also you should never be wearing anything that makes you more of a target for a lightning strike. Yes, and True. metal on yep. your hands. That's dangerous. That's man. like walking around with a tree on your head by a bolt. Yeah, yeah that's why I don't that. wear a chain anymore. Yeah, exactly. Pat got struck by lightning three times. That's why uh -huh. he's like that. Yeah, <laughs> the doctor said he can't wear a chain anymore unless it's made of plastic or candy. <laughs> <laughs> and I ate it on the way here. That's why it's gone. <laughs> It'd be funny to be like to be like Slick Rick, but only with like nerds rope jewelry. Like your yeah, chains are yeah. all just gummy gummy bears, and <laughs> lifesavers on each <laughs> yeah, finger. Life yeah, lifesavers. Yeah. All right. Well, here's here's the last one. I, I just have a, uh, just a uh, this is this is an advice question submitted to Slate, and I figured let, let's round up today, give some advice to the people, and hopefully the pal guys will will, will have some in, insight on this. This is from the uh, the Slate sex advice column. So let's yeah, just we're out. This. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so okay, it be, it, the, the advice letter begin. The advice letter begins like this: How do I chew on a dick? <laughs> okay. okay, pretty straightforward answer so far. How yeah. do I chew? How do I chew on a dick? My Just new partner. Mouth. <laughs> yeah, my new <laughs> my new partner recently requested that I incorporate teeth slash chewing into my blowjobs and I don't know where to start. I'm very nervous I am about it. Terrified of this. <laughs> Who yeah. the fuck? Oh like, my god. Is, it, is, uh, is, is she dating Francis Dollaride? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is she talking about like a like a corn on the cob style or carrot style? Right. That would be my question. <laughs> Yeah. Is it I, sideways? She's holding the balls <laughs> on one end and the tip on the other, and she's maybe grazing it? I could see that. That makes more sense. I mean, if yeah. she wants just how, maybe they start there. Well, there's, yeah, exactly. There's the first thing. Ask him, do you want it Bugs Bunny or Elote? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it says, uh, 
Uh, so, yeah, I'm very nervous about it. I don't want to hurt him in a way that doesn't feel good, and I don't want to harm him. But I do adore him, and I want to be open to at least trying something he wants. I've asked him for guidance before going down on him, but sometimes I struggle to stay on top of listening, sucking, and nibbling all at the same time. <laughs> so I think some advice outside of the moment might be helpful. <laughs> Wow. Okay, here's here's the problem here is that you're waiting until you have the dick in your mouth to ask the question. <laughs> what <Well>, my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like my my answer to this question would be use your teeth. Yeah. Oh, that's, she's dating yeah. the she's dating the chocolate axe commercial guy. <laughs> 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 this is making a little more sense now. Why would you want anybody to chew on your penis? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Do people like getting hurt? That is seriously weird. Am I weird. discovering this right now at my age? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, if I think about, like, the uh, the sort of the, the broad spectrum of, I don't know, like, uh, the erotic sadism. I think this broad you know, might be on the spectrum. No, I'm s- kidding. <laughs> Spanking, <laughs> <Sorry>. flogging. <laughs> I, uh, That's a I weird know. special interest. I, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> to go to Slate.com to answer this question, maybe just ask the guy. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not sure where dick nibbling uh, falls, but, you know, uh, so I was just, like, you know, just I would start with, like, uh, Maybe like you know, like a, just sort of a like a, like a sample, not not a bite. You know, you can't you can't bite. So I would just um like I don't know, just like start start with some s- low pressure and then and then work up until they're screaming. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess so. You have to. It's you have to. Um, it's like a mini game in a in Mario Party. You have to like get the thing right in the middle. You know, like yeah. a golf swing on a on a yeah, golden I, I, tee. I don't, know what, <laughs> I don't know what kind of answer this person is expecting. That's not just like be be gentle you're saying i don't want to hurt him i don't want to harm him. do they think there's someone who's going to be like oh there's actually one specific point on the penis that cannot feel teeth and you just have to make sure to bite there like just I, do it right i don't know i feel like this is like creating an alibi though like you yeah. would only do this if you were planning to bite someone's dick off <laughs> and wanted to create plausible deniability oh yeah you're That's on late. actually so right I, the, com told me <laughs> they're the they're the columnists at slate or they know the columnists and they're having that person say just bite it clean off so that yeah. they, uh, say, oh, there's well. no danger <laughs> there's no danger in biting it as hard as you possibly can i'm just thinking of like uh, al swearingen getting ahead and just going bite fucking harder <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was like um when i found out what blowjobs were when i was a little kid that was the first thing my mind went to it was like oh my god it could be bitten that's so scary <laughs> that is scary <laughs> that is really fucking scary man <laughs> and chewing is almost even more scary yeah chewing yeah, is chewing. really scary Felix learned, yeah, about, she, Felix learned about blowjobs from a witch in a candy cane house. That's my name. It goes in the mouth. It's just like you will later. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose before we uh, wrap up today's show, uh, you know, some I know we looked at the lighter side of news today, but I'd like to, you know, like a, a sort of a mortal note here today. Uh, King Charles just diagnosed with ass cancer. Buddy. No. Yeah. So King Charles has prostate cancer. And I guess like my only thought on this is I, I said when he became king that England should not put him on the money. And I was proven right. They're going to have to redo this. I mean, gonna, <laughs> if you have a British pound note with King Charles on it, hold on to it. It'll be a collector's <laughs> item in about six mm-hmm. months. <laughs> what a Mickey Mouse king. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, Felix, it's so he. What a cursed life this guy has had. He has been like trying to stare radiation at his mother like every second of his life, <laughs> and then that old bat kicked the can at like a hundred and fifty years old. He he's ninety. His mother was a hundred, <laughs> and God. she just died, and he gets to become king. And then it's just like, oops, no, sorry, your asshole is going to kill you. <laughs> yeah, it's the, and even before that. Before that, he had to deal with like probably being the last or second to last king because of a USA Network star. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they should a character-driven uh, regicide. 
<laughs> yeah. They should do old school rules though, where if you the now the asshole gets to be the king after he dies because he's the one who killed him. <laughs> <laughs> they should just put his disembodied asshole on nah, the they chair. Should get, they should, <laughs> as soon as they get, crown on top yeah. of it. <laughs> as soon as they cut out his asshole, they should put it in the Tower of London. Lock it yeah. up there. Yeah. That would be, or, that'd be a good or money. they should just they should just chop his uh chop his asshole off in like Mary Queen of Scots, like have oh. the whole parliament watch. <laughs> guillotine directly yeah. on his asshole right after he dies. <laughs> well, you know, best of luck to the royal family. We're uh, we're praying for As you, always. King Charles. As praying always. for you and your asshole. Mm -hmm. But uh, that does it for today's episode. I gotta I gotta thank all the Camerons who came out today. Cameron, Cameron, <laughs> Cameron from Pot About List. Thank. You. But uh, the, the the Powell boys, you guys are getting ready to. Uh, Hit the road? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're doing a, a sketch comedy tour with our friends um, from Home Planet. Very funny sketch group. And Pierce yeah, Campion as well. Please check uh, out Pierce and Home Planet. They're extremely funny. They're, yeah, they're check great. Out we love Associate them. Associate as well. We're Junior doing, uh, we're doing live great. comedy. Junior's live really good. Live sketch comedy in Boston, Chicago, Toronto, Atlanta, and Philadelphia. And then we're also doing some live podcast shows in uh, Detroit, Minneapolis, and Carborough, North Carolina. So, uh, if you want to, you know, see what days I saw any of those that are look, on, Chris, don't you dare <laughs> laugh at Carborough, North Carolina. You motherfucker! <laughs> 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 on you right now, you bastard! <laughs> Sorry, I'm just saying one of these cities is not like the other. <laughs> yeah, one of them's actually good. Fuck you, Detroit. <laughs> Fuck you, Minneapolis. <laughs> We're not going, going anymore. We're not going there anymore. We're going just to Carborough. We're, every yep. state doing any We're, of doing, We're doing eight uh -huh. shows in Carborough. Yeah, by yeah. All that. eight shows. Uh, so we need to sell Carborough all those residence. out to break even. So if you want to buy tickets, head to swagpoop.com slash shows. <laughs> and all of this <laughs> website, y'all. That is uh, our real website. <laughs> the link to Swag Poop uh, for all eight shows in Carborough, North Carolina. If you're in the Carborough, North Carolina area. The Triangle. <laughs> what they call it? The Carborough metro area. I think Carborough, Carborough um, in order to have people not laugh at it, I think you guys need to refer to it as a number, like the six. Like yes. That really helped oh. Toronto. Yes, Carborough. Hmm. No one. <laughs> yeah okay yeah the yeah. chosen one yeah i like that well everyone uh yes uh link, links will be in the uh show description 